All right, so what is uh, Etsy Alternatives? Uh, Etsy Alternatives is a system for determ de determining the fault commands. We'll get into what those are in a second. Um, and then also there's a tool called Update Alternatives, and that's the main tool we use uh, for, for interacting with it, and that maintains the symbolic links for determining the default commands. Uh, we've got a longer uh, definition. Uh, so you have, in, in, our, in, in the free software world, we have a lot of tools that are providing similar functionality. Uh, some of this happens where we have, for instance, uh, the first place I ran into it was with your, what, uh, what VI replacement do you want to have, right? So we did not have VI as free software because it was not free software. Bill Joy would not release it for us to use. He did after many years, I believe, but in the meantime, we'd come up with a bunch of VI replacements, NVI, Elvis, et cetera, et cetera. And um, so when you typed VI, which tool did you get, right? So Etsy Alternatives was a way of covering that. So I could say, okay, on my system, we're gonna use uh, Vim. Uh, you know, Ed might wanna use Elvis. Actually, he'd probably, his, his would probably be Emacs anyway, so uh, as a replacement for VI. But you can you could do that. But you would have multiple packages that might be providing the same command, and you had to say, okay, who wins? Rather than just stomping on each other, uh, especially in Debian, because you're not allowed to stomp on each other. So they had to come up with a way of cooperatively figuring out what you're going to use. Um, and th and then uh, there's some other things that this enabled and made it made it easier for us to do. So the uh, Etsy alternatives is a way to to uh, get these packages to get along and allow us as the end user not to have things just up and disappear on our system. Uh, so I kind of hinted at this. It was originally created for Debian. It's now available on most distributions. Uh, I did not check all of the distributions because I'm certain DistroWatch, if it's still around, has hundreds of them. Uh, but Red Hat, SUSE, and a bunch of other distributions had them. Uh, and of course, all the Debian-based distributions will have it as well. Uh, it's not quite the same on every distribution, so the Red Hat version is a little bit different Debian, but uh, I'll let you discover those faults on your own. All right, some features for Etsy uh, alternatives. It's system-wide, so when you make a change to Etsy alternatives, you're making a change for the entire system. If I go through and say, okay, on my system, Vim is VI, then I every user on my system, when they type VI, they're going to get Vim, right? So that is a system-wide change that I'm making. Um, I can locally override it on my local system, right? So I can say on my system, I want, vi I want it to be uh, Vim. Uh, again, Ed can use Emacs or whatever he wants to use on his, his stuff. I use um, Ed. Ed, okay. Well, that would make sense, actually. I was going to make a comment about just pulling out some magnets, but that's even better. <laughs> um, you, it, you do get an automatic default, so the packages get along and, and decide, you know, you, you get th that. Um, and that is done by ranking uh, within the, the alternatives, and then uh, it works with the packages. So the packages come in and say, for this particular thing, I have a ranking of blah, and then Etsy Alternatives goes and looks at all, those al all of those, and the thing with the highest uh, ranking wins by default. Uh, and then you have grouping. I'll, give, I'll cover that uh, where that's important. Uh, we already got into it a little bit. Uh, so first of all, let's see what it looks like. So this is a, the Simling chain. So I'm looking at user bin pager. And so that is, a, you, can, you can type pager as a command and use it as a command. And that is a Simlink to Etsy alternatives pager. So all the, the Etsy alternative stuff points into Etsy alternatives. And then from Etsy alternatives, that command then points to the, the command that's in use. So basically, if I type pager as a command, the file system looks at user bin pager, which goes to Etsy alternatives pager, which then goes to bin less. And so I end up running less in this particular case. Now, I saw some com complaints about this, about, oh, we, now we have scripts inside of Etsy. You're not allowed to have scripts. No, we don't have scripts inside of Etsy. We have links to scripts inside of Etsy. The scripts don't, there's, there's no actual code in there. Those are, those are actually pointing somewhere else. Um, but we have our configuration inside of Etsy, which is what Etsy is, because Etsy stands for configuration. We just couldn't spell back in the 70s whenever we created that. All right. Um, grouping. 
this is what I was talking about. So one of the things that, that, that I, I think is important is when I say, okay, this command is going to provide this functionality, then I want my documentation to match as well, right? So if I've gone through and said, okay, less is my pager, but I type man pager and I get information for more, that's not going to help, right? So I want, it, uh, especially since I might not actually be able to easily see which command is being used if I can't find the man page for it to figure out how to find out what the command is, right? So I think it's really, uh, really awesome that they've included this functionality. I don't know when they added it, but it's been there for as long as I can remember. Um, and uh, well, actually, I do remember a time when it wasn't there. And I really appreciate that it that came in. Uh, so some examples. Uh, or some examples, an example actually. Uh, vi sudo is a command that started off using vi to go through and edit your sudoers file. And uh, there were then of course a bunch of people yelled and jumped and screamed and said, I don't use vi, don't do that to me, right? So they early on added functionality to use whatever editor you want, right? They didn't change the name, but you can still use whatever editor you want. Um, and uh, there's you know, don't use nano. Nano does wrong things. But if you want to use Pico, or not, not, use nano, don't use Pico. Sorry, I'm getting that backwards. Don't use Pico. Pico does bad things. But nano, the free software version of it, that's fine. Um, but you can use whatever you want uh, with that. Uh, and you can, using Etsy alternatives, you can have that set up uh, because it uses the editor alternative. So an ex uh, some examples of how to find out more information about the alternatives on your system. Uh, so as I said, up, update alternatives is the main command that you're using to, to interface with things. Really, for the most part, it's going through and changing some, some soft links and stuff. But I can use a dash dash list and the name of whatever uh, uh, alternative I'm trying to look at. So it shows me which uh, um, program is being used to start as the accession manager in this case. Or I also listed for editor. And it shows me the different editors that I've got available to use as my editor. It isn't telling me which one, although maybe add one because he came in first. Um, so, uh, but it is listing the ones that are available. Now if I want to see the, 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 the details, display the details, I can use dash dash display. And this is telling me the, ex, the accession manager is in auto mode. So this is being t taken care of automatically. I haven't changed anything. Uh, the link for the best version is user bin start KDE. Uh, it currently points to user bin start KDE, so that's good. You know that it's doing the thing it says it's supposed to be doing. Um, and then uh, the session manager is pointing to user bin x session dash manager, or that the the link for it is in user bin. Um, and then it tells you the priority. I mentioned priorities, so in this case, start KDE is the priori priority of 40. That wins because I don't have any other x session managers here, so 40 is greater than things that don't exist. But here's one that has some that do exist, other, some alternatives do exist. So pager, um, it, again it's in auto mode. The link to the best version is bin less. Uh, it currently points to bin less. The, the original link for it is in user bin pager. We've already covered that. Uh, and then it tells you the, the slave, the dependent uh, page is for the man page. Um, and then below that, it tells me bin less, the priority, and it lists the different uh, uh, options that we have for a pager with reducing uh, priority as we go. So I can see what different options we have. So if I say, you know, I just feel like being back in the, uh, in the early 90s and having less functionality, I can go through and change my pager to be more, right? So, uh, or PG, which has been, been a long time for that one. Um, config allows you to go through and, and make a local change. So I say, okay, on my system, I want this other thing to be the, the priority, regardless of what the, the, the ranking is. Um, so I could go through and choose more or PG to be my pager by choosing two or three. Um, now there's an error on this page. This is, this is, this is just to see who's paying attention to details. This isn't going to work. Why isn't it going to work? At two of the same priorities. It's listing what's, in, what's running. So bin less is in auto mode. So that's the selected version right now. 
and it's being done automatically, or I can choose manual mode. So I could choose to less in manual mode. That means if I, if I install something at a higher priority, it wouldn't take over. So I, I just hit enter to get back to a prompt, but that tells you why this won't work for right now. So look, look at the prompt. So I ran that as me, as a normal user, but the, prior, the alternatives are system-wide. So I, as a user, don't have permission to change these links. I need to run as root or sudo in order to do that. So if I'd have chosen something, I would get back an error that says, hey, you don't have permission, right? And this is, this is good because we don't want different people, you know, if you've got multiple kids running on your system, you don't want them changing priorities on everything for everybody, right? Uh, uh, and, and messing with everybody else. So this is system-wide. If they want to have something local, we'll talk about some alternatives they can use for, for having their own version of things. But there's a system-wide functionality, so you can't change it as a user. You need to be able to sudo or, or get to root in order to do that. Uh, I had another note, but I forgot. All right. Uh, so in this example, I, I actually went and added sudo. So you could see, again, you need root. Um, so uh, in this case, uh, if I had gone through and actually changed the, the, uh, the priority so that it was in manual mode, now any updates to the system, automatic updates, aren't going to change it. They're not gonna, the packages are not going to override what I've set in manual mode. If I want to get back to using whatever is by default and get back to automatic mode, I can say auto and set it for that particular alternative. Um, and then I can, there's a non-interactive mode, so I can update alternatives, a dash dash set, so I can, you know, this is good for programs and things like that. So I can set what, what it is I want it to be and um, uh, the, for, so I need to give the alternative and what I want it to point at. Uh, that bin more needs to have previously been registered as a possible alternative. So if I, if I uh, decide to set the, the, the pager to bin ls, that's not going to work because ls hasn't been registered as an alternative for pager, I hope. I don't know how you run your system, but on my system that will not have not been the case. Um, now if I want to list all of the alternatives, well, you can just ls dash l etsy alternatives. Um, but you can also use get selections. This is a dash dash get dash selections. Uh, there's several Debian tools that use this feature. Um, and that will go through and list all of them for you. I did not put that on the screen because I would have had to get really micro tiny font to fit them all because there's a lot of them. Uh, so go, that's a, you know, exercise for home. All right, roll your own. So how do you go through? If I wanted to make ls, uh, my pager, or in this case, cat, my pager, I can go through and do that. So the dash dash install allows me to, to uh, um, add a new program as a possibility for a particular alternative. Uh, so I give it the link that it's going to go in as an alternative for, the name of the alternative, and then the program that could be added, and a priority for that, a ranking. Uh, and then I use the dash dash slave to give me the dependencies. So again, I list the link that would go through. I, I think they could, this, some of this becomes redundant. The name of the new one, and then the, the, the uh, man page that would be used. In this case, it's the, the uh, uh, dependency that I'm putting in as a man page. Um, note that it is uh, possible to cause uh, problems, or not problems, but to change things. So notice the error message here, uh, re renaming pager link from user bin pager to bin pager, because I didn't bother to see where it was. I just guessed the first time I started testing this. Uh, so I moved the link on myself. In this particular case, it wouldn't have really mattered. Um, but depending on your environment, that might matter. So uh, uh, be careful with that. Uh, I had to do a couple things to undo the, the uh, problem. I could have just probably just gone and changed the link, but you know. Uh, and then if you've done something like that and you're like, oh, I really didn't mean to do that, you can unroll your own by removing uh, that option. And actually, I think you could do this to, to remove options that were added by packages as well. Uh, I didn't test that. Uh, there are some other command line options. Dash dash query. 
Uh, that is basically gives you a machine readable form of display. So it gives you the same information you got from displays, essentially, but then you've got labels on each of the lines, so it makes it a little bit easier to parse. Um, dash dash skip auto uh, skips the alternates, uh, alternatives that are in automatic mode. So you, this is basically a way of finding the things that you've, that you've put in manual mode. Uh, I found when I was looking at it, it was also showing me the slaves, the dependent alternatives, and I didn't take the five minutes it would have taken to figure out how to not display them because I really don't care. But if you want to, you can figure that part of it out as, if you want to. Uh, dash dash verbose will give you more feedback about what's changing, so it'll tell you more about what it's doing. Uh, and dash dash quiet is don't tell me anything unless there's an error. So this would be if you use this with your dash dash set, this is a way to automate things so you're not also not having to, to pipe to dev null uh, or, or uh, um, uh, because of output that you're not going to look at anyway. Uh, some example alternatives. So we've already covered editor a little bit. Uh, so the nice thing is, that, so as I say, my case, uh, the alternatives initially was for VI. That's the editor I use, except for I don't use it. I've only used VI for like three months of my entire life because I've never had access to VI for the most part. I've used Vim, Elvis, and VI, all these other di different VI clones over the years, but I've typed VI to use them for decades because I can, I, I, that's the alternative I use. But I can also use editor, and that will get whatever I've got set up in my system is still going to be some form of VI. Um, but if you've got like a system that you've just set up or a bare bones system, uh, you might end up like with in a Debian system, uh, your bare bones editor becomes nano. Uh, I believe that's still the case. Uh, www-browser and xww-browser. So what's the difference between the two aside from there's an x dash in front of it? The first one is a text-based browser. And the second one is, an, is a graphical browser. So if they're both web for web browsers. Pager we've talked about. Um, C++, this is an, a, a good example of where you might have different versions of C++ installed and they're doing weird, different, I say weird, not weird, but they're doing different things. So this allows you to set, this is the default compiler that I want to use. You might have a bunch of different compilers installed. You might have them set up for different environments. Say so if, if I'm just doing something, this is the one to go through and use. Trace route is now available for multiple packages. So which trace route do I want to get? So it depends on what you've installed, and, and, uh, but you still end up with a trace route. Uh, package. Uh, send mail is actually, I don't think we have this in, uh, in Debian land. You could add it. Um, but uh, the, as I understand it, that's one of the things that, that Red Hat is using uh, deter to determine whether or not you're using send mail or postfix. Is they're actually using Etsy alternatives to do that now. Uh, Unison uh, is similar to the C++ thing. Unison is a, is a uh, file synchronization tool that actually keeps track of the files on both file systems. So when you've changed something, it can actually collate it and, and do two-sided, two-way changes. Um, but uh, they've, they went through uh, uh, some different versions for a while, including incompatibilities. So they're using Etsy alternatives to where you can just type Unison, but you get the Unison of the day or whatever you have on that particular system. Um, and then uh, I just thought it was kind of cool that you could do this for games too. Which, which adventure do you want today? Uh, and then uh, we need special handling for Java because Java is special in so many ways. Um, and uh, um, anyway, so it, it's got its own uh, tool for going through and handling the dependencies for, for Java to make sure you got your JRE and all those things set up as well. Um, it, the system handles it for you on the Debian system. Um, so you don't really need to care about it in most cases. If you are doing Java development where you need to have multiple uh, environment set up. Sim similar to C++, you probably already know how to do that. You don't necessarily need to use the uh, update alternatives, update Java alternatives tool to do it. Um, but since it exists, I figured I should at least mention it. All right. And if you have further questions you want on that, talk to Joseph. All right. Uh, other mechanisms. So Etsy alternatives is not the only way to choose different things. I left out the most obvious, you can type a different command, right? If I want NVI, I can type NVI. I get NVI, it's kind of cool that way, right? Um, so I can use an environmental variable 
to do that. I'll give you an example in a second. Uh, there's another package called Sensible Utils. Uh, and then, of course, the, the old school way we can use aliases. Just, we don't use very much of those unless somebody's going through and destroying the proper functionality of RM. All right. Okay, so using a, setting up an editor or setting an environmental variable, I can declare editor all in caps as, as an environmental variable and assign the path to an editor for that. So in my case, user bin vim, but again, we could do ed or, or whatever you want to use for an editor. Um, and I did it on one command line just because it's, it's how I do things. But you could set the, you could set the editor, and then any time you, you use vi sudo after that, you would get whatever your editor is. So if you wanted to have that all the time, set it up in your bash rc or in your dot profile, and then vi sudo will use whatever you want. So in my example where you had a bunch of kids that are wanting to change things, if one kid wants to use nano, one kid wants to use emacs, um, then they could each set it up in their own personal profile. Hey, when I say editor, this is the thing to give me, right? Uh, and vi sudo and, and, and lots of other tools will go through and recognize that and then use whatever you've set in that ver environmental variable. Um, and so even if you've got editor set up in uh, Etsy alternatives, the, the uh, uh, environmental variable will override that, will be, have a higher priority. Uh, the sensible utils, uh, there are some things that instead of using the environmental variable, go through and look for sensible page or sensible editor, sensible browser. Well, those are basically little scripts that go through and say they're doing a similar type of thing as Etsy alternatives, but they're coming from a different package and they've got some wrap, wrapping around them uh, instead of just using soft links. Uh, I did not go through and, and investigate them all. Um, but for instance, uh, one of the examples I wanted to give aside, aside from vi sudo was crontab-e, but as it turns out, crontab-e is using sensible editor uh, rather than it's the alternatives. So they changed that at some point. Uh, then aliases. So I can just set an alias. So I set alias pager equals bin cat, is, is assigned bin cat. That means when, when I use the pager command, instead of looking at the file system, my shell will see that I've got an alias for that and that that alias will be used instead of whatever would be on the command line or whatever would be on the file system. So, um, and then I can unalias it to get back and you can see uh, I use the type command to say what command would you run if I ran this command. So type pager says what would you run if I used the pager command. Uh, after setting the alias, it would use the, the value of that alias, which was bin cat. After unsetting the alias, getting rid of it, it would go back to looking at the file system, user bin pager, which we've already gone over. All right. Uh, some th these are some different ways of contacting me if you have questions about uh, the presentation or want to do some follow-up. Uh, and then I have some resources that, uh, in here as well, man pages, uh, there's also a graphical uh, uh, tool, G alternatives, that allows you to do similar things to update alternatives, but through a clicky clicky uh, type of interface. Uh, and then the last thing I've got on there in resources, uh, and this is this is uh, homework for you if you want to do that, is update dash tab tab. Uh, a lot of Debian tools use update dash as a, as a kind of form for the name of the, the thing. So there's update rc.d. Uh, and there is some really cool uh, commands in there for helping maintain your system and learning more about system administration and how a Debian uh, distribution, how a, how a Debian uh, uh, system is set up. All right. Any questions that didn't come up while I was speeding through that? Nope. All right. Hopefully that means I cleared up everything. Uh, I didn't see anybody actually fall asleep or hit their head. So, all right. Uh, thank you, <laughs> and thank you for coming.